Hello, Chief Architect users. This is another episode of solving the first page of Chief Talks General Q&A Forum. This was a popular video on my YouTube channel last time. We did this as a live stream. This time I'm doing a little pre-recording so we get a little higher resolution in this and upload it to YouTube. And so if the... This is the first time chiming into this series. This is where I go to Chief Architect's own forum called Chief Talk, and I go into the general Q&A, and I go through this list of the first page here and start solving problems as best I can. Now, I'm coming into this with no prior knowledge of what these threads are even about. You can see here I did click on custom muttons, and that was just to see what this was even about, but then I decided let's just not click on anything and truly go through this as a first pass. So I do know that this first one is about custom muttons and they're asking about um, a missing load muttons tool designation in your edit dialog. And I do know what that's about. I've run into it once before when I needed to create custom muttons. So I didn't know what this process was. I think I can just simply draw one single wall and pull an elevation and let's get into this. I'm going to drop a window in here and we'll just turn this into a fixed window. Simple enough. Now we've got a fixed window. Let me go ahead and, and move this label out of the way. And so if you want custom muttons, you can draw in your own muttons so that, well, that's a tough word to say. So that if I draw in a line there and let's see, I'm going to draw in a line here. So long as I make a CAD. CAD block out of these two lines. Now, if I have these outside of the window and I select the window, here's what shows up in the edit toolbar, nothing special. But if I have this within, in the window, and then I select the window, I get this tool right here. Let's just get a zoom in on this. I get this tool icon right there, okay? What that does is create a custom mutton profile on your window. Isn't that cool? And I think there's a way to, yep, there it is. That same tool, unload those muttons. Okay. And something that's kind of fun about this, I mean, I know that I have, well, here, just grab in, it's called the RD logo, the rabbit design logo, maybe. Let's see, RD logo. There we go. I've got my custom logo in CAD, in another one of my videos to create this very quickly. Now, I can create a mutton from that Rabbit Design logo. So if we go into a 3D view, take a look at this. Here we are, isn't that funny? Now this is part of the window. You're gonna see there here, if I drag this window over, it's part of that window. Custom mutton. Pretty clever, huh? All right. Let's go back into the form, see what else we've got. Next one down. Uh, oh, actually, it looks like we just got one four minutes ago. Can't click, can't click garage or other non-livable space as an object. Highlights entire building instead. I've tried to search, but can't find anything close. Something in Home Designer. Well, he's in the wrong forums. We're only solving Chief Architect Premier stuff here. Um, when he goes to make a selection, it's only... Well, this isn't even the exterior room. So what it looks like is he's probably selecting some kind of CAD element, what I would assume. Um, because otherwise, if you were selecting part of a room, this might be a reference display. Let's see. He doesn't have a reference display on. No, so... I'm pretty certain that this is probably a CAD element that he didn't know that he has on in this particular plan view or layout. Um, and actually, it doesn't look like Home Designer even has those options. So don't know how to answer that one. He's going to be redirected by one of the other members. Trouble importing Topo. This is a, a common thing that we bring up. Um, so he's providing us with some Topo maps. Um, let's see what kind of answers he's picked up here it does in fact look like someone's been able to direct them in the right way the problem with these uh, these particular posts you really got to do a lot of cleanup most of the time if you want to make a topo map uh, automatically convert to 
um, dimensions. Here, we'll grab it. We'll grab one of these. Um, I'm not sure which one is which here. We'll just grab this DD. And we'll save it in my send and delete folder. And then if I just open up Chief and get to that, my plan dialog here, get back to my browser window and just grab this right off the bottom here. Bring it into Chief and it's automatically going to bring up my drawing assistant. Maybe I'll convert N to polyline, sure. Um, I only want to import the CAD blocks that are referenced in this drawing, assuming that it's done right. Now you can see here, he's got a bunch of different layers here. Now the first time I bring this in, notice I said the first time, I'm going to go ahead and leave all of these layers checked. And actually, yeah, I'm going to leave these checked. A couple of these layers are even locked. And then I want to associate them with chief architect layers by name let's click next yes all right now here's why i said the first time that i'm importing this and actually what's happening here? it looks as if we've got some data that's way outside the bounds here going on way down here okay so there's a legend way down in the corner and then if we get tied in here what is going on here? We've got some kind of, this needs to be rescaled. So this is a bit of work just to prep for even bringing this import in. Because it does in fact look like we've got some things that are pushed way outside of the bounds. So maybe a need, uh, some more information here is needed. Let's see if we can zoom into the center here. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure where these boundaries are coming in from. So. I'm just going to highlight this section down here if I can and drag this to a I can drag this to an absolute like tab go into absolute and put this at a zero zero marker. I don't even have to fuss with this and then all I need to do is window fill window. Well actually let's do window fill window building only or selected objects would have worked. Okay, so now we've got our topo. We've got a bit of more information here. Might want to CAD block this so that we can resize. Um, when we CAD block it, you see the legend comes up. That's kind of funny. Edit CAD block. Let's actually delete out this legend. Why not? We don't need it. I'm not sure what this is over here. And in fact, it looks like we've got a bunch of different funny elements here. So. Control W closes out, save it. Yes, certainly. All instances are fine. Um, and now we've got this tab blocks offset over here. So let's bring it back into the sheet. Take a look at what he's got. Now it's obviously too small, so it needs to be rescaled. And then let's explode it again and see what we've got going on here. So I don't really see any data points to convert here what do we even have here so this is a little bit a little bit messy i think they needed more uh work on the front end but what i was referring to about the first time i bring this in is that i want to come in here select one of these layers so that i understand what that layer is so say that this was actually a topo info i needed to find this by understanding that i'm clicking on a, a topography cat element seeing what layer it is, and then maybe re-importing and auto uh, designate as um, a data entry point for top topography. So that if we went and did that import dialog again, which we could do just by dragging in, that when we got to our mapping panel, our polylines, let's see, go in, next one, is that maybe something in here is cueing us in that this is some kind of data point. And sometimes it'll be in like a topography section. Here we go, topo. So a topo section, major minor would be our, I mean, typically what I would be looking for. And so then I would want to convert that selected layer to elevation data. Same thing with the minor, elevation data, okay? Then when I brought it in here and set it to the origin and by its own layers, then it might, it might convert my data the way that I want it to. 
Uh, it looks like there's more to this story. More help may, may be needed. I'm going to close these windows out and start a new channel. Get on to the next one. Ceiling heights and wall heights. Let's see, I have an issue that I'm not sure how it happened. The drywall does not go up to the ceiling in the kitchen hall entry. The lower level top plates don't seem to be the same. And the wall above the door extends up. Well, this could be a simple thing that's just room height designations. He does provide a plan. Go ahead and open it. What's going on? So, just pull this view right here. We're going to pull a perspective floor overview so that we can take a look at what walls set up. Let's see. So, actually, this is interesting. When I select this room and it's highlighted, you can see that the selection goes all the way to the top. So, this floor height is probably the same as in fact if we select this neighboring adjacent room probably going to show me that the floor heights this it is the ceiling heights the same so what that means is he's got some kind of like a, a tray ceiling in here um yeah he's got some kind of tray ceiling in here let's see if we pick this out Looks like he's got a tray ceiling in there as well. See what we come up with here. I've checked ceiling heights. Yeah, that would have been my first thought too. And then, okay. Yes, in fact, it looks like Solver Eric did find that there was some kind of a tray ceiling in the room. But if I went back, and if he didn't, in fact, want that tray ceiling, you could always get into, I think in delete objects, we can get to a tray ceiling. Let me take a look here. Quick. Plane ceiling planes. I mean, there may not be tray ceilings in our delete dialog here. I have to look for a minute and I feel like looking for that long. So uh, let's see, what, what is this right here? This is our tray. No, no, it's not. Okay. So, I mean, that user is going to know better than we are where exactly this is. They're probably familiar with their own drawing, but uh, it does seem like they've got a tray ceiling in here just somewhere, and I don't see it. So, could use the tray ceiling tool, which, where does that exist? Proofs? Tray ceiling polyline. Let's do that. So, I'm going to grab this. Ceiling planes is not displayed. Oh, well, there's, there's problem number one. He doesn't even have it displayed so that we could even see it. Um, this room that contains the tray ceiling. Here you go. There's his own error. Has different ceiling finishes. So if he had just turned on his ceiling plane, well, that would have shown him that he's got a tray ceiling that goes the length of this room. And you can see it. It's dashed. Having trouble selecting it because it might be on a locked layer. So um, maybe a couple of little goofy things there. I could, of course, use select mark key similar, select all similar, and there, in fact, is the tray ceiling. It is right here. And it's, ah, there it is. I needed to tab into it. And here we go. He had, maybe he wanted to recess in the ceiling, who knows. You're going to see here, everything just lifted up. There we go. All right. I learned something there, I think. <laughs> okay, let's get on to the next one. Sliding window open direction. Window open. Looking at maybe just a reflect about tool. Hello, how can I show the sliding window opening direction in elevation? The arrow pointing. Oh, so he wants to see to see an arrow designation. Sliding wall real quick. And we'll get a window in here and we'll sliding window. Go. Let's elevation. And a couple of things here. I know that if you open up this window, we've got an opening indicators panel here. And so by default, it's 
hide. And see, if I just click show, it shows it right there. And if we move our label out of the way, there we go. Now, if I select on this window, you can see here, you also need to have opening indicators turned on. Okay. That's a quick solve. No problem. X13 crashing on Windows 11. That's a common error. I would tell you to migrate. And, oh, excuse me. Transfer. Transfer the elements in your template plan from your previous versions instead of migrating, which means you need to duplicate your CAD details if you have them. And then everything else needs to have an import export. Um, so we touched on that a little bit in the previous um, version of this, this video series. You might want to go back to that first video in the series. Blurry square when exporting PDF from layout. Okay, so it looks like he's got an element here overlaid on the top. And what that is, is it's likely an image or a PDF of some sort that has lost its link to its original content. Let's pull a new layout here. And let's say I'm just going to drag an image onto this layout. So we're opening up my template file. And what I'm gonna do is let's just do a little screen clipping. I'm gonna screen clip right here and then I'm gonna paste that screen clipping right into Chief Architect. If I get this, let's see. Okay, we've copied it. Let's paste it. There we go. Paste it as a picture. Now, if I open this up and I uncheck Save in Plan, and it no longer has a valid path and it's missing, what happens to it? Well, nothing really here, but let's Control X to just cut that, and I'm going to paste it on my page zero and then sometimes when you go to print on that on that sheet update our preview here it will have an overlay on it so the only thing i would tell you is that you need to make sure that you have no um existing elements left over and you might want to just copy everything that you know is pertinent on a page so i might just let's just do a this is a layout box, so I can, of course, use Marquee Select, but a layout box is actually a CAD element. So if I switch to the L key, now I can restrictively select all of my layout boxes on this sheet. And you see here what it left behind was this page table because that, in fact, is a version of a schedule. So if I control X all of this and then delete this page, what will happen is, and actually, let me go back. Let me undo that. I deleted everything on this page. What I'm going to do now is drop that. Well, we can drop that image file on here again, but I don't want to do that. Um, I'm just going to draw a CAD box here. If I delete this page, it's going to let me know that there's an item on this page. So it's kind of a clever way of getting all the things that you want to remain on a page and then deleting anything that might be left over. So now I deleted this page. I can insert a page before, go to that page before, and Control-Alt-V, paste all of my back, and now I have a clean page that will print just fine. So a couple little tricks to kind of troubleshooting things. Okay, let's get back into this. Filing through pretty quickly here. Let's see, iMac graphics card AMD. I am not a Mac user. I am familiar with the platform. Looks like someone's looking to understand what kind of uh, eGPUs they might be able to use or integrated GPUs in the Mac ecosphere, <laughs> the Mac platform. Uh, and someone here uh, named Kbird, his name is actually Mick, seems to troubleshoot it. Takeoff estimate using material list. This, uh, this question comes up pretty often. I'm assuming they're asking how difficult it is. Does anyone out there actually use the material list to estimate their takeoffs? No, I don't. Um, I will use it to check an area. Um, and and I, in fact, I do have a pretty good system for my site analysis so that this move forward in this page and get kind of other floor plan here. And if I get into my plot plan section, 
This is a new template. Oh, this seems to be an older template. Might need to update. But typically, my plot plans will in fact have some area macros, and it doesn't look like I have them, but sometimes I'll take a P line just like this, and then in the label, drop in something like this, which sets a global variable for this equals area. And I might do area round up to zero decimal places and then close this with another parentheses. And then I might add on some text like square foot. Um, but in fact, the area um, built into X12 and above, I believe, will show square foot by default. There we go. 1641 square foot. Of course, if I expand this, move this around, etc. Now watch this. I'm going to copy this move this over, I'm going to get back into that label, and I'm going to say this underscore two equals area around, etc. So all I did was change that global variable, and now watch what I can do. I'm going to say this plus, well, actually, let's add something. I'm going to say percentage sign total, oops, dollar sign total, equals equals this plus this or two close parentheses square foot and look at that pretty clever now watch me just move one of these or the other you can see here I'm analyzing these all right let's get back into this so I'll use that to do some material takeoffs if I need to. If I really need a material list, and, it, and it's because a client's requesting it, of course, there's some tricks for that. I feel like that should be an, a whole nother video because you can basically tell any component within Chief Architect that it is some other classified component. Make a P-solid report to your framing materials list. Um, but that's a, that's a longer video. Okay, grainy looking rendering. This user has been using X12. So we're not in X13, we're in X12 since it came out. And for some reason, we're forever struggling with this renderings. Okay, so what we're looking at here, this is not a PBR. This is actually a ray trace, a CPU ray trace. I can tell because, well, there's a few, there's a few indicators here. Uh, one is that we've got some... Um, some pixels that are under processed and that's uh, indicative of a CPU ray trace. The other thing that we're looking at here is we've got some kind of um, focal blur or field of view, right? So he's enabled focal blur. He might not know that he's enabled focal blur. So he's getting a very blurry scene where only the railing is in focus. I don't use CPU ray trace, so I don't do a lot of troubleshooting on this. I am very familiar with it, but, um, a lot of problems with this. I'd rather use a different uh, engine if I'm going to use a CPU ray trace or X13 real-time ray trace works. Um, all I would say is he's going to need to turn off his focal blur or field of view. I can't remember what it's called anymore in Chief Architect. And then also up the number of passes that he's doing to get rid of this noise or the firefly. Using style palettes. Next one is using style palettes. I'm using style palettes to show my clients different finish concepts for their project. In rooms where they, there are vaulted ceilings though, Chief gives me attic walls. And when I try to apply a style palette, it doesn't change the wall finish on those walls. Yes, Chief, consider those the room. Now that's not true. That actually should work just fine. Um, go ahead and close these down and we'll do, oh, cut down, we'll do a new file. And let's just draw a room out. Now I have some quick tools for rooms that I've been building out. Um, and one of them is to automatically create a vault. I got this tool right here, no ceiling. Here we go. So we're lifting that ceiling or removing a flat ceiling for that room. And actually I want to create a, create a gable and 
There we go. Now I've got a gable end condition. And now I also have some room tools. So let's get into my a full bathroom nation here. Uh, where we quick click in here. And there we go. We've got a bathroom. Now, let's go in. This is color coded, by the way, if you're wondering what, what goofy colors we've got going on here. You can see here it worked just fine for me. So I'm not exactly sure what that user is doing wrong. But something to keep in mind is anytime we have auto generated attic walls and we've got a hip condition those rooms are not this actually isn't going to be considered a room because we don't have a closed room so you could in fact take these two end walls copy them and then paste hold position to create a room on the attic level now it won't create a room so long as that those two end walls are attic walls because they're set to no room definition so I could either copy paste these other walls to finally create a room. Look here. I don't think this actually makes a difference though. I still think that there's something else that's going on that's not quite right in that user process. Let me take a look here. Someone's suggesting that they use the balloon through ceiling option. And, uh, and it looks like he's having this condition right here where, um, and this is common. This is a, um, something that people misunderstand sometimes. If we select this wall and make it balloon through ceiling in the structure tab, what it's going to do is going to fight that attic wall. Some. So all you need to do is delete that attic wall. Got a true. Maybe that's a solve there for someone. Um, but other than that, it, it seems like style palette tool works as intended. I'm not exactly sure. I do have a, another quick tool to quickly put back that ceiling. A couple little clever things and build out of style of power. All right, next one. Let's look at what we've got going on here. Hi, I am working on X12. Good, good title. Uh, for some unknown reason, my scroll bars are now substantially smaller. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying to figure out where that is. It looks like someone may have pointed out where that is. But anytime you have some kind of global parameter, like something that's affecting your menus, that's going to be in your preferences. So somewhere in these preferences, it's going to show your scroll bar option. Well, and I'm not exactly sure. Let's not even waste any time, but it's here somewhere. Maybe check your F1 help file. Might help get you there pretty quickly. See, X13 internal rendering error and crash. This is from last week. If you want to know my thoughts on this, you can look at my, um, my previous post in this series in this playlist, which was the first one in this playlist. Next one is wall and floor platform intersection. I'm having trouble finding a setting to control how my exterior wall is placing itself to the sill plate versus sitting on top of the subfloor. Interesting. Something changed on my template file that I used. The floor system is inset from the exterior wall. Okay. So there's going to be some settings in build wall. Um, excuse me, build your foundation. And also there's going to be some settings in the wall settings here. You can balloon through a floor below. The other thing that you can do is alignment in your wall designation. So if I select this wall right here, and I'm going to control E to open this up. Or in fact, another thing I can do is if you have the wall definitions tool to find wall types, excuse me, find wall types tool in your wall walls toolbar, you can quickly get to your exterior wall. And something you might want to note is foundation to exterior layer. How is this lining up? And it's quite possible that he changed one of these settings here, or he needed to change something in his build foundation designation. The floor menu. Um, in the edit default foundation wall. Right? And same thing, we can get in our wall types. Fine. And we've got a couple settings here, but in fact, by default, this is just going to be a concrete. Or you can go to the interior line, but the interior line actually aligns with uh, your default wall. So um, probably pretty limited options here. I'm guessing he did something in his wall type or he 
in the structure panel those to balloon this through the floor below. So there's going to be your main options. All right, let's go to the next one. Lost my project browser and layer display floating toolbars. Again, this is going to be in preferences. That's a really simple one. Do know where this one lives. It's going to be in your reset options and you're just going to reset your side windows. That's what those are designated as side windows. Laying tile. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to lay custom tile. Let's see. I'm assuming that what we're talking about here, and let me take a look at what's going on here. This is a common problem for um, new users trying to understand how material files work versus pattern files that work in our vector views versus floor regions. Um, versus just CAD polyfill. Um, and I mean, it's a bit of an expansive topic, but one of the things to note is our pattern panel in a defined material dialog or contextual menu only designates what this looks like in a vector view. So that if I change my rendering in my preview window to vector view, what we're seeing here is only the pattern file, meaning I can change this to a concrete pattern file. And if I change my rendering view back to physically based or standard, it's not going to suddenly become concrete. So there's two different designations within any material, one of which is what is our pattern that represents the material. Now you could do a pattern from texture where we take a sample of the texture and based on well, its highs and lows or whites and blacks, I should say, you might be able to create a custom pattern that works depending on what threshold you set. Now this is much easier if you have a gradient map that's white to black, which is say that you might wanna load in a roughness map or a bump map that is a gray and black map into your texture panel and then create or generate your custom pattern. So that's a workaround for creating a custom pattern that might align with your material texture. Now, another trick to this is keep pattern and texture in sync. If you check this and then you resize your texture, both the vector pattern and the texture itself will scale together. So we're scaling the pattern up as we're scaling our texture up. Now, the reason this is taking so long it's because we took a sample of something that needed a very low threshold. And, and that means that we've got a lot of vector lines. So that if we switch to a, our vector preview window here, and this spinning wheel stops, we can see what I'm talking about. Um, let's just, I'll go ahead and do an example of uh, creating a pattern from a texture that would be a lot cleaner than this. I'm gonna delete my, or I'm gonna replace my texture source let me get into my material assets and I'll get into something like a tile where I've got a bump map. That's a known bump map. We can take this gold star tile and I can take this, I can take this roughness map. That's at least a solid gray versus black. And then back in my pattern panel, I'll do a pattern from So that loads up, hit my pattern panel. Still having a, a trouble parsing this view because it has that previous pattern still loaded that had some. And let's get a pattern from tech. Now I'm going to increase my threshold. Don't need it to be so sensitive. And there we go. I didn't exactly choose an easy one, <laughs> but it does generate a better looking pattern. And this is a good idea of how long it takes for this process to work. Some it really is good to just have a black and white image. And there we go. There's our new pattern file there. Put it in vector view. 
pretty clean, clean enough anyways. And then to take this full circle, you can see here, this is a standard view. If we go ahead and edit this to show line drawing on top, we are in fact going to see line drawings populate here or our vector lines, I should say, populate. So if I go back one more time into this adjust material, all I need to do now is replace that texture with the actual diffuse map texture. Pull this around. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the rest of this. It's gonna take a long time for us to keep loading this up. All right, cabinet door panel polyline curved solid. I'm in need of a bit of assistance, please. I like to place the cabinet door panel into the curved polyline shape shown in the attachment. Oh, look at that. Chief came back up for us. Close this down. In fact, we're going to start a new file. Don't save. Okay. So what this user is trying to do is he created a custom polyline and now he's trying to insert a cabinet, insert a cabinet door. And really what he needs to do is create his own custom cabinet door. Um, there's no real workaround for this. And you could do it pretty easily by doing possibly a, well, let's try. Let's try a couple different things here. I'm going to spitball here for a second. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here is something that would actually work. But draw this, make a curved wall here, and see if I can't drop in a window something of Now, this doesn't always work as intended because sometimes the windows, uh, I mean, it's a parametric modeling system. Sometimes it just outright. So I have a tool here that immediately turns uh, a window into a panel. And there you go. But you can see here, it's not curved anymore. That's kind of the issue there. In fact, even on this original window, it's not truly curved, right? Um, so something we might be able to do let's take a look at this maybe we can get in here and do a material region and have that material region curve um really just this is very much top of the head so i'm not sure what i'm doing something that would even truly work so there is one material region and let's make a hole in that material region okay and what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to see what I want to do that's a hole this first material region I want to stand out five eighths there we go and now I've got kind of what looks like a panel right and it might be that I can select this p-line copy hold position simplify and then convert to polyline. Now you can see here, when we did this in 3D, it dropped it over here and that's a problem. So this is no longer useful. So what I do need to do in fact is come in, pull an elevation and, well, it's gonna be challenging an elevation because I didn't draw exactly draw it square to myself. But now I should be able to hopefully select just this section, simplify, and then convert back to a, well, we could do a, a P solid or we could do a backsplash. Backsplash is going to wrap to that section. And maybe this time I'll cut that finished layer or I can simply just make this smaller, maybe uh, what eighth of an inch. Do that. Eighth of an inch. Now I have these two sections, all three. And what happened here, we need to back up a few steps. We lost our original cut in this. So let me draw that cut back again. You can see here, I've got that section below. I can snap it to this. Here we go, I'll snap it to the edges of that backsplash below. That's crossing itself. So I'm not being, you know, really accurate here, but whole point of this is I'm now selecting these two backsplash regions that are curved and converting it to cabinet door, what he was asking for. And there we go. Got what looks like a cabinet door on a curved wall section. Pretty clever. That worked out. So that was the theory. Obviously, you need a little bit of tweaking to make this look like what it should look like. But 
and then you should be able to drop it right back into place. I'm going to place that cabinet. There's that cabinet door drawer, and then it's just a matter of kind of might want to set your offsets. Any number of different tricks you could do uh, do this appropriately. I should have drawn this curved wall um, and started this at a at a true 90 degrees to the curve, a tangent to, and then this symbol would have came out um, correctly. Uh, save that for earmark that for another video where we're coming up with creative solutions. Pretty good. Legal size layout. I feel pretty stupid for asking this. Don't feel stupid. Uh, let's see. I have Googled. Well, okay, so what it looks like here is we've got a drawing sheet. And what are they thinking? Did they think? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, they tried to edit their drawing sheet and assumed that their page zero would automatically change. What we're talking about here is if we open up a, what is it? Alt, alt new, new layout. Oh, we don't have a bind key out. So on our page zero, if we change our drawing sheet in our print menu here, drawing sheet setup, and I change this something to like NANCB, you're gonna see here our drawing, our CAD elements didn't automatically resize. And that's that's actually the way it's supposed to be. So if I turn my drawing sheet off and then I group select this or I turn it on and I use my L key to um, enable the line tool. Then I can shift marquee select all these elements. But um, probably more appropriate, I would just turn my drawing sheet off and select all of these items. And I could make them a CAD block. That would be simple enough. It seems like something I've selected here cannot be resized, which see that by the transform replicate. Oh, here we go. Resize. And there we go, I'm resizing it. So I missed a couple elements here. Obviously you need to select everything within that range. Undo this, I'm gonna marquee select that whole thing, resize 0.5. And when we turn our drawing sheet back on, there we go. You only need to locate some of these things. Um, selecting the drawing sheet when I select this. So if I hold control, and then deselect that drawing sheet. Now I can do a point to point. And there's my new drawing sheet at 11 by 6. That solves that one. Tiny home with no foundation. My client asking is asking for a handful of tiny homes for his RV park. I look for options to create a foundation using skids or beams, but did not see anything. Is there a way to define the floor such that below the two by, I can attach the two bys, the set of skids or I beams. I mean, you can always manually frame. Um, let's see. Yeah. A bird or Mick is redirecting this person to someone that's got some videos. Here's our local David J. Potter. Um, Maybe some information in here on on how to manually do the. I don't know that I need to get in this into this in this post. Um, I do have one of my live feeds from Facebook did show me creating a pole barn on the fly with a custom foundation, and you might be able to look in that video to come up with some of this stuff. In our framing designation under the build menu, we do have options for choice or floor beams and if we draw on a floor beam if i want to get into my uh, framing floor plan here i don't actually have let's see create a above in fact let's just do a new file there we go and in floor plan now i can do that So you could, of course, delete your foundation wall, et cetera, and then modify these floor beams. We have all the same tools as far as designations are concerned, that it's top, bottom height, any number of different. You can build pretty much anything manually and quickly, honestly. All of your tools in your edit menu. Very quick. Okay, let's get back in tiny home. 
I think we're last two here. No reflections are. I have a need to prepare blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting no reflections. And what's happening here is what? I don't know. Maybe he has reflections turned off. Let's just show you where that is real quick. In our 3D menu, um, in our uh, camera view options, if you're in a 3D view, you're going to see toggle reflections. Let's see if that's, in fact, what's the issue here. Uh, looks like he has a screenshot. Oh, he has a different issue. Uh, first off, he could just change the material class to transparent, and he's going to get reflections on really quickly. Or he, it looks like he's actually got the roughness turned up to 100%. So um, that doesn't help things either. If he turned this to zero, he would get reflections back. As well. That's a simple solve. And the last one, and hopefully this is a good one. Uh, let's see, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with this detail, but how can I get CA to frame the header properly and just not just for the size of the opening? Well, let's see what he's looking at here. Uh, he wants to, oh, well, he wants an offset here for what looks like a moment frame. This looks like it's a, um, a struct panel. Yeah, it's a wood structural panel here. This is a common detail for a garage, especially in California. Um, yeah, so he's trying to get an offset from his header. He could just manually edit this. A couple different ways you can do this. Let's go up a floor level. If I select this wall, um, or actually, you know what? If I get into my project browser, here we go into the project browser we've got this guy here right here wall details and in fact i don't have wall details and i know why because i haven't built it yet so i selected this wall i build it now i can open up that wall detail oh and we don't have any windows in this so let's redo something here let's drop a window in here or in this case he's got a garage door why not doors not wait where are we over in the framing floor. Back into our working plan view. Let's select this. Let's rebuild it. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, why not? Everything. And then get in that wall detail. Uh, you're gonna see here that we've got got no header at all. That's not good. Let's uh, let's see what the on this. Oh well, it's taller than mine. Oh. Let's just do 80 inches for the purpose of this video. So build this back into that wall detail. Here's our header, very simple. We can edit it right here. And we can edit these items as well. Framing members, might even be able to use the trim tool. Let's see here. See if we can trim this. Yep, does that work? Yes, and in fact does work. Now we've got a bunch of trimmers if we needed to. So very quickly, you can edit this out. Get this to exactly what you needed to do. What was his detail? It was he had a couple or jack studs. You know thing. So that was a pretty quick edit. Great end to this this episode. Episode two, I guess you would call it. Um. Anyways, if you guys have any questions on things that I'm discussing, this I got a lot of feedback on this last time, more so than most videos I put out there. So. It seems like the community likes this one. I love getting feedback. I love interactivity. I hope you guys come in, see this video, pick up some new tricks, and then come back to me with some questions that I can answer and help you out. So drop a like, subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.